So can you get great food photography with just one light? Of course you can. Let's jump into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and this is the place where I help you learn simple aspects of food photography to make your images just that much better. Uh, if you're just getting started with food photography or you're just looking for some tips and tricks, click the subscribe button to follow along for more videos, as well as check out the backlog of videos chock full of great food photography content. In this video, we're covering the one light photo shoot. Previously, I've done a natural light video, and this was always kind of the logical follow-up to that video. And I chose the one light setup because, to be honest, most of us getting started with food photography have another job and don't always have the money to own a set of different kind of, uh, of studio lights or even the space to put them. So for this video, I'll be using the Godox SL60, which I purchased on Amazon a few years ago for about 100 bucks. We'll also be using this newer 24 by 36 inch light box, which I got for about 30 bucks. I'll leave links to both below, but keep in mind that the SL60 has now been updated to version 2. Now that I've explained, we'll be using only one light source for this photo. We're going to cheat a little bit and use additional light sources. And by that I mean reflectors. Taking the light from the main light, the SL60, and bouncing it around until we have the setup and look that we like. So the subject will be shooting a photo of some yummy chocolate ice cream. For a thumbnail for a recipe video on my other channel. I'm envisioning that photo being bright with lots of rich tone in the chocolate. Uh, so we'll need to create some nice soft light. Here are some things to consider before we begin the setup. Where am I going to position the light? And what reflectors am I going to use? And where am I going to put those? We'll answer each of those questions as we get into the kitchen to shoot. So let's go do that now. So here we are getting ready to shoot my thumbnail for a video uh, about an ice cream recipe. I've got kind of my scene set up. Um, I don't have to worry too much about the left side of the scene because in the thumbnail, that's going to be text. So my focus is going to be on the ice cream and the ice cream cones in the glass. Now, I've got another option, which I may do a bowl, but for right now, I'm just doing the, uh, the, the ice cream cones. Um, so now you can see, you know, I've just got the overhead lights on and the color's kind of crap. Um, it doesn't look great. Um, to get a photo from here with just the, the color cast, it wouldn't look great. The chocolate ice cream would just have a just kind of a weird a weird tint to it. The white bottle's got kind of a, a, a goldish tint to it. Um, so we're going to now bring in uh, the light and then set that up and then use some reflectors to make sure that I've got light hitting the front as well, just a little bit. Um, but I want that light coming in this side, uh, kind of backlighting the the uh, the ice cream, um, and a little bit of light reflected back into the front. So you can see what it is, but there's definitely uh, some contrast there. So you know, like we've spoken about before, I always want to make sure that since I'm shooting this way, that my light source comes from behind or to the side of the food. Um, this option, I'm, I'm going not directly behind, not directly um, uh, to the side, I'm going in the middle. So between the 90 and the 180, you know, let's do some quick math. What is that, 135 degrees is about where I'm coming in from. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm using this background space here and I need to make sure that I get some light in. Um, this is going to be, you know, blurred out a little bit in the photo but it is going to block some light. So you need to make sure that my light source isn't blocked when it's hitting here. I don't mind it blocking a little bit back here, and that's fine. But up here, I want to make sure this is backlit really well. Like I said, the left side of this photo, this frame, is going to be, it's going to be text over top of it. So I'm not too worried about that. So let's get the light in here and then... We'll get that set up, see how it looks. Uh, I will turn off uh, the rest of the lights in the house. The living room lights are on, the kitchen lights are on. Um, and that's, I mean, it's all just kind of a very warm cast, which I don't want for this. Um, I, wanna, I wanna be able to portray the colors as they are. So we'll get started doing that.
For reflectors, I've got these two, which I plan on using. Again, just a white foam core board. You've probably seen this in the past if, if you've watched this channel at all. Um, just white foam core wrapped in aluminum foil. Does a great job shining back a lot of light. If I don't want a lot of light, if it's too much, then I'll opt for this, um, which is not reflective as much as the tin foil is, the aluminum foil, but it will push light back onto the subject. Won't be as much, um, but like I said, all we're doing is using one light for the shoot and bouncing back, creating other light sources with this one and the other reflector. So we'll take a look and see what that looks like. I'll get the light on. Now the SL60 that I told you guys about, the Godox, it's not a very powerful light, but when the lights are all off and you've got a, a camera on a tripod, you can leave that uh, shutter open longer. So it does look like it's much brighter than it actually is. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna do right now is I'll probably have to tone down my shutter speed, drop the ISO so I know it's nice and clean turn down the shutter speed and, and just do a longer shutter, but nothing's moving, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the ice cream is already pre-scooped. Um, I've got it in the freezer, so it comes out. I can just plop it right on there. I can garnish some chocolate pieces around it, and we can go. Um, once the shot for the thumbnail is done, I will probably uh, do a vertical just for the Instagram, because everybody on Instagram loves ice cream, so I'll have a shot for there as well. Uh, so for now, let's get this light turned on, take a look at it. I'll turn the video on in this camera here so you can get an idea of, of what just that light looks like with the rest of the lights in the house off. So you can see outside, it's pretty dark. The sun's gone down. Don't have to worry about any light coming from the outside. I mean, it's about to rain, so we may get some lightning. I can't control the lightning, so... Um, Let's get this light turned on, get the other lights turned off and see where we're at. Now it's important to remember when you are using a light source that is not natural light or the sun, there's a rule called the inverse square law. And basically what the inverse square law says is that the closer your light source is, and I'm, I'm really dumbing this down, even for me, that's just the best way to understand it. The closer your light source is to your subject, the softer your light is going to be. If you, the farther back you move your light, the harder those, those shadows are gonna become. So I want my light nice and close because I want it nice and soft and bright. Like I said earlier, I want a nice, you know, light, bright, um, kind of rich photo. So. That's what we're going for. The, the Godox light is on. It's set at 100%. I'm gonna turn off the kitchen lights. So now let's get behind this camera and you can see, we'll put it in a video and you can see what we're working with. So here we are with just the one light coming from the back and you can see the milk bottle the right side of that milk bottle looking at the frame is, is catching that light, darker shadows on the outside. The glass is picking up the light. The top of the ice cream cones are picking up the light, except for that one in front, which I like. But I will want probably just a little bit more light on the front. So I'm gonna start with this reflector here. And you'll see how quickly it adds more light. You can see they're going in there. You wanna make sure you keep it out of the frame. But look how much light that adds. That's a ton of light that it adds. Now I'm gonna try the other one and see if maybe this looks a little bit better. I'm um, looking at this right now. I think, I actually think I like this one better. I think this will give me a little bit more of a richer color on the cones, on the, on the, uh, 
on the chocolate ice cream itself. And I think that's what we're gonna go with. Now it's time to get the ice cream out. Get that rolling. Get our photo. So I'll just drop some chocolate pieces around. Don't want to go crazy. Just want to, you know, give the viewer the idea of let them see the chocolate. So we're ready to go. We are at ISO 100. F3 and 140th of a second. We're coming closer and tighter. I knew the one for the gram, for the Instagram. <laughs> Going vertical, this has to move in a little bit farther. I'm going to open that top just a little bit like that. There we go. So that is one light. And to be fair, we actually used two lights. We had one light and one light source. So your reflector becomes just another light source. It's all it is. It throws light as well. You just have to make sure that you capture it and put the light where you want it to be. I hope, uh, I hope this seems simpler uh, just by actually seeing somebody doing it. I know it's not, um, It's not a difficult process, but it does help to see somebody else doing it sometimes uh, to make it that little bit easier. A lot of times we think to ourselves, you know, it sounds easy enough, but until you kind of see somebody doing it, um, it, it you know, you're not always quite sure. Uh, it's a simple setup, you know. One light, my setup, one reflector, that's all I needed for this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, if you hit the like button on your way out, I appreciate it. Uh, have a good week and bye for now.